Welcome to 4E TV. Thank you so much for joining us today. I am here, Dr. Mark, with my wonderful, beautiful, and smart better half, Dr. Michelle. As we like to say, we are M&M without, without the, the sugar. sugar. I, I think that's kind of cool. We have a good time, and we really enjoy the show and enjoy doing this together. We, we really do uh, try to live this out. Speaking of live it out, we want you to live it out, too. Uh, the 4E philosophy, as we like to say, is, is like this. There are four parts of each of our persons, the physical, emotional, intellectual, and spiritual. And we need to do our best to live those out every day. We have to, and we want you as well, because they are all an interdependent functioning system. When one breaks down, the others break down. So we want you to be encouraged by that, live the 4E philosophy. And today, we are pumped up because we want to talk about a subject today that's really um, near and dear to all of us today. I, um, as much as we travel, we see people uh, routinely that, that we, we are acquaintances with, we're friends with, or that, that don't know us at all and come up and talk to us. And eventually, um, the topic of conversation will roll around to something that sounds like this, how are you doing? And, and routinely, I hear these words back, I am tired. I'm tired. I've been working too hard. I feel like I'm working myself in the ground. I'm working myself to death. I need to get some rest. Now, when we're told that, it, it almost sets me back a little bit because we get tired as well. We understand this idea of physical fatigue. We know that we're going to get tired because of an overexertion or a lack of rest. And we need rest and recuperation to recover from those times, to get that um, that rebuilding, if you will, so we can have the energy to go. But we should not, I repeat, should not be tired all the time. That wasn't God's design. It's still not God's design, and it's not his plan. We need to be vibrant, be alive, be full of vitality, so we can get out there and do what we're supposed to do and be all we're supposed to be in this world today. So with that said, we need energy, and that's what God wants from us. You know, I was researching um, in preparation for... Um, our time today that this idea of chronic fatigue as I was looking online and kind of researching around I ran across um, a website from the Center of Disease Control many times I, I go there or another website to actually um, look up conditions and see what the definitions are so I thought for giggles and grins for our time today I would look up this idea of chronic fatigue syndrome or CFS as the CDC Center Disease Control defines it, Chronic Fatigue Syndrome, CFS. Now, with that said, when I looked up the definition, trust me, it was quite long. And I, I, as I looked at the definition, the characteristics or the symptoms of the definition to determine if you had chronic fatigue syndrome, it all boiled down to this. You're tired and you don't really know why. Or you're tired and there's a lot of reasons and we haven't nailed it down to one. So, we lump it all together and say you have chronic fatigue syndrome. Now, wherever you are today, if you're tired, if you're worn down, if you find yourself repeating, I need some rest, or even have said these words, I am working myself to the bone or working myself to the ground, I want you to sit down and relax, and I want you just to prepare to receive what God has for you, because we have some words that are specifically for you today to give you that rest you need, to give you the recuperation you need to have, the activity, and be all God wants you to be. I don't want you to suffer from something, a catch-all definition like chronic fatigue syndrome. All that says, it means you're exhausted and you're tired of being tired and you want to do something about it. But what do you do about it? I looked up in the scripture and I found the answer. So I've got my Bible today. As you know that we always carry our Bibles here at 4E TV, and I want you to know that everything we do is from the Scripture. So I'm going to open my Bible right now, and even though I've got this particular Scripture grouping committed to memory, I want to read it to you because I want you to know where it comes from. This is found in the Gospels, the first book of the New Testament, the book of Matthew. We're going to be looking specifically, reading three verses from Matthew chapter 11. And I'm going to read Matthew chapter 11, verse 28 through 30. And wherever you are, I want you to open your Bible and get used to going there. The Bible is like 
a, a wonderful place of destinations of information. But if you don't know how to get there, or someone just kind of repeats you how to get there, it's important that you do it yourself. Get in there, dig around. When a minister tells you something, check it out based on the Word of God. So we're going to be looking at Matthew chapter 11, verse 29 through 30, just briefly today. So listen closely. This is in red. That means Jesus actually said these words audibly out of his mouth, as recorded by Matthew. So here we go. Come to me, all who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. That's Matthew 20, 11, 28 through 30. Now it's amazing, as I look at the wording and the verbiage of this particular passage, the word burden and the word yoke is used. Now we're carrying a lot of burdens these days. We sometimes, when we carry this conversation about being tired, I sometimes have heard these words, I feel like I've got the weight of the world on my shoulders. I feel like I'm carrying the heavy burdens of so many. I've got so much on my plate, it's so heavy, there's a heaviness over you. Now, what is being said in this passage by the Lord is this, that there is a way to carry a burden, and there's a way to not carry a burden. If we can carry burdens God's way, the burdens become lighter. They become not burdensome. They become uplifting and easy. He says his yoke is easy and his burden in life is light. Now, a yoke was put on an ox. It's like a wooden harness put over their neck and their shoulders. It's attached to some sort of um, machinery that they're supposed to drag. Now, today, we put yokes upon ourselves, and we try to drag or carry things that we have no business carrying. And that's why we're so tired. We are trusting in our own ability versus trusting in the ability of our Heavenly Father, who says to us, take my yoke, take my yoke upon you. See, he's given you a job to do. It doesn't mean that you're not going to have to work, you're not going to have to pull things, but he says, I'm going to put this on you, and you're going to be able to do it, because my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. So you'll have to work less hard, but you will have to work. We'll be less tired all the time. Now, our way... It's important to catch this. I'm going to say this really slow because I want you to really receive this. Our way brings fatigue. Our way brings just this immeasurable level of tiredness. But God's way brings ease and rest. So our way is fatigue. God's way is rest. What do you prefer? Fatigue or rest. Jesus says, I want to give you rest. With that said, as I promised, we're going to be talking about fatigue today and what to do about it from a physical sense. We know what to do about it from a spiritual sense, but Jesus does not want us to be ignorant. He wants us to, to study and learn about this physical body with which he has created. Now, having said that, my wonderful, wonderful bride... I want you to tell us today exactly what it means to uh, really be fatigued. Now, there's three types we talked about, this, this idea of uh, physical fatigue, which we understand, and there's mental fatigue. There's something else I really, really hammer home today, really understand it, this idea of cellular fatigue. So kind of give us a, a, a snapshot of the other two, the physical and the mental, and then get into the cellular. Well, the physical, physical fatigue is like the muscles. The muscles actually getting tired and weary and heavy laden, probably from physical activity or lack of rest or even lack of good nutrition. Mental fatigue comes from uh, the, the inability to keep a constant mental process through time, and that can be from being overly physically tired, unrested, or even having a lack of nutrition as well. But at the core of all of this, where does all of this fatigue come, for, come from? It comes from the cellular level. Well, our body is made up of millions and billions and trillions of cells. Hair cells, eye cells, liver cells, and kidney cells. And all of these special cells are driven from the mitochondria, the powerhouse that lives within these cells. We think of our cells as like 
mini cars. And all of these cars have motors. Some of these cars, these cells, have more motors than others. They have more mitochondria than others. So therefore, they're going to make more energy for us. The muscle cells make much more energy than a, a hair cell makes. So there's going to be a difference in the number of motors. Well, these mitochondria, they are what make up 90% of our energy. And our energy comes from a, a component called adenosine triphosphate, or ATP. And in order to make ATP, these little organelles or motors inside the cells have to have very specific care and nutrition in order to give you all the energy that you need. So if you are lacking in the vital nutrition that drives these powerhouses of the cells, your cells are going to have fatigue and your body is going to be globally tired. All right, so this is amazing. I want you to catch this. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, the idea of physical fatigue and mental fatigue seems like what we always focus on. But in reality, what you're saying is that maybe the fatigue in those two areas is caused by something much smaller and much more basic, this cellular fatigue or a lack of energy production by the mitochondria. True? True. So we need to understand, folks, how to deal with this and what really is happening within all the mitochondria. So when you talk about this mitochondria, kind of go into some, some more factual details about that. Well, the mitochondria, like I said, mitochondria make 90% of our energy mark. And if we do not have the nutrients that the mitochondria need, the nutrients are the spark, the spark that actually drive the cellular processes forward to make the energy, which is the end product. And if we don't have that end product, our bodies are going to be globally tired. And we're not going to be able to show up with either the physical performance that we need or the mental performance because where does that energy come from? It comes from the different types of cells that do these two types of processes for us. Muscle cells and neurological cells or brain cells. All right, so the, these mitochondria that we have, they are, they're small and I think you were telling me that they're about the size of uh, uh, like a safety pin. Yeah, the, a mitochondria, you can't, it, you have to look at the cellular structure through a microscope. So to take the end of a bobby pin or a safety pin and look at that, that's about the size of mitochondria. So folks, I hope you're catching this today. There are millions and millions of mitochondria through our body and our cells, these millions of cells, within the cells there are, there are just innumerable amounts of mitochondria. So when these things aren't functioning right, and we're going to tell you what to do about this in just a moment. When they're not functioning right, it's like this domino effect throughout the course of our body. If our cells aren't functioning right, the actual organ those cells composed, that composed to make up is not functioning right. No wonder we're tired. No wonder we're wore down. No wonder we have um, uh, mental fatigue and physical fatigue. So this is fascinating. Yes. So the mitochondria is, is really a little guy, but it has a lot of function. Right, and if we abuse our systems, for example, if we don't get enough cardiovascular and physical exercise, the, the mitochondria actually require about 90% of all cellular oxygen to do their function. So in, in order to have good mitochondrial function, we also have to have good cardiovascular health which means we have to be on that treadmill getting fit and staying fit. And if the mitochondria are subject to poor nutrition and a lack of antioxidant support, then we are subject to what we call oxidative stress. Oxidative stress we can liken to a rusty door, if you will, where that metal is exposed to elements, which would be poor nutrition and drugs, antibiotics, alcohol, things that cause oxidative stress in a system, and it, it makes the mitochondria kind of like a rusty door. I was reading somewhere recently uh, about um, the idea of too much sugars and, and uh, environmental toxins having an effect on mitochondria. Can you kind of talk about that? We have hammered home sugar time after time, Mark, and it, that process of sugar is so important for us to understand because sugar is in everything. It's in every box. It's in every package. It's in every 
processed ingredient that is on the shelves today. And we know that sugar drives a syndrome of insulin resistance. And that insulin resistance back door is um, created by what's called age glycosylated end products. Too much system, too much sugar in the system, too long, too strong all the time creates these age glycosylated end products, no pun intended, AGE, and it makes our proteins sticky. So if our proteins are sticky, that means the mitochondria are kind of sticking together and not even able to actually do their cellular energetic work because they're bogged down at the very nature, at the very level of the, of the cell. So I hope everyone is really catching this. We, we have, t I like what Dr. Michelle said, we've hammered home this sugar thing. Understand that sugar, uh, the idea of glucose is necessary for energy production. We know that. But when there's too much going on, it causes these uh, age glycosylated end products. And I like, even though she said no pun intended, I, I think we mean that, age. It's going to cause you to age quicker. And so with that said, our, our cells are not functioning efficiently. Why do we go, keep going back for more sugar again? We're getting a false sense of energy that's causing damage. It's like this little bit of what seems good turns out to be bad. I can liken that to what the word says. Sin is fun for a season, but in the end it leads to destruction. That's what sugar is. It's like a little bit of thing that might sound good, feel good, but it's temporary and it's causing damage. So we've used these temporary things to put a band-aid on this open wound and it's not causing us to heal. It's not causing us to have consistent levels of energy. So we must cut down the sugar, if not all the way out. So yes. the, you mentioned oxidative stress and all that. You liken that to a rust door. So when a door becomes rusty, it becomes where it's immovable and not functional, right? Right. Okay, so we talk about the idea of mitochondria. We understand that all these things cause damage. What can we do about it to fix it? Well, excitingly enough, the mitochondria actually have certain nutrients that they thrive on or function better in the presence of. And one of those nutrients is coenzyme Q10. It's, it's a very heady process to understand the cellular function at, at the cellular function of what mitochondria really do. But these mitochondria make energy with the tricarboxylic acid cycle and the electron transport chain. All to, to, go, to give you an end product, ATP or energy. Well, coenzyme Q10 is one of the cofactors that is in, these, in the electron transport chain that creates the production of ATP as an end product. Another nutrient that mitochondria really enjoy to have around is lipoic acid. Lipoic acid in and of itself is like an antioxidant and it helps stabilize the membrane of the mitochondria. Mitochondria also like to have carnitine around and penithine. Pen penithine. These two things are shuttles which will shuttle fatty acids into the cell to be burned as energy. So when, when people are, are looking for um, uh, nutrition or nutrients, what, I've seen these things and I, of course I know what these are. We, we call them supplements. We're supposed to get these things from food but food has been lacking these days, so instead we have to supplement our food supply with these things such as CoQ10, uh, alpha lipoic acid, which may have a trade name of ALA. So if you're looking for CoQ10, it'll be CO and it'll be a capital Q and then the numbers one and zero, CoQ10 and the alpha lipoic acid will say ALA. Sometimes you'll see pantothene as a, a B5. Correct. So um, you talked about carnitine. Now what does carnitine exactly do? Carnitine is necessary to shuttle fats, fatty acids, across the cell membrane into, across the membrane of the mitochondria in order to burn them as fuel. That's interesting because we see that um, the panathene and the carnitine kind of work together. Panathene pulls it across the, the cell membrane and the carnitine pulls it across the membrane of the mitochondria. So we need both to work well, right? Right. So what are some other nutrients that actually help out with the uh, functionality of the mitochondria? Back to the basics of cellular membrane stabilization. How do you make cell membranes and the membranes of mitochondria stable? We use fish oil. EPA and DHA are omega-3s, are omega-3 fatty acids. 
Omega-3 fatty acids are one of the big stabilizers of membrane stability and fluidity. And having fluid cell membranes is very important for the cell and the mitochondria to be able to transport those nutrients into the cell to get them into the mitochondria to use them. Now, we, we've talked about this a lot, about this idea of fish oils. So the relationship between omega-6s and omega-3s, which is EPA and DHEA, or DHA, um, it has gotten off. We've got too many 6s and too less 3s. So if we get too much omega-6s in our diet through the standard American diet, what does that do to our cell membranes as opposed to the healthy functioning of our cell membranes that EPA and DHEA can do? Omega-6s have a tendency when the ratio gets out of balance, most, uh, the standard American diet, the ratio is typically like 20 to 1. And when that ratio gets so far out of balance, that system becomes inflammatory and those membranes become rigid. So we like to get that ratio more in a ratio of like 6 to 1, omega-6s mm -hmm. to omega-3. So we've got a very fluid membrane and a very receptive membrane. What about um, some other supplements I'm thinking of are creatine. When we talk about creatine, I've heard creatine energy production. So what does creatine do in relationship to the mitochondria? Creatine adds additional energy production which supplies um, other needs in the mitochondria at the cellular level. Now, I was reading something recently and this is, this is fascinating. Can we uh, produce more mitochondria. Is there any supplementation that would actually uh, purport to increase the number of mitochondria? Mitoc the increase in mitochondria is going to come back door from physical activity and exercise. So if you stress a system and you increase its cardiovascular capacity or its musculoskeletal capacity with strength, you will increase the number of mitochondria in certain cells. That is really fascinating and interesting because, you know, we, we understand that the reduction of stress, too, is going to be a biggie. You talk about oxidative stress. Is that um, akin to having stressful uh, occurrences in life, just living like that, all wound up all the time? Yes. Oxidative stress doesn't just come from the outside. Oxidative stress actually comes from the inside, too. With daily metabolism, the body actually undergoes processes called Re oxidative and reduction, reductive reactions. So if we are having too many of these reactions go on just with simple physiological processes like stress and we don't have enough of the available n nutrients to actually reduce the system or take the stress level down, then it becomes harmful to the system and those oxidative free radicals stay around in the system and do damage. That makes a lot of sense. So. Um, as we're talking about this big picture, and you can see this little bitty guy, this little mitochondria is really very functional and, and he's got a lot going on. Are there any sort of nutrients or vitamins that we should be focusing in on as far as these antioxidant um, properties that we need to um, have to fight these oxidative properties? The big antioxidants is pretty easy to remember. It's ACE, ACE, vitamins A, vitamin C, vitamin E zinc and selenium. There are other antioxidants that are very, very, very powerful like glutathione and superoxide dismutase, which superoxide dismutase can be found in your deep, rich chlorophyll type plants like spirulina and the blue-green algae. So there are ways that we can actually supplement and get these antioxidants into the system from a plant-based source, or we can go ahead and supplement them with a broad-based cellular support using antioxidants. Yeah, and it, it's really important, folks, to really get this concept because what we don't want to do is rely on these nutrients and supplements that we've talked about from the outside source, try to replete our, our body for those things. We're talking about getting our nutrients from food, basically. So we need to eat better, cut down the junk, cut down the garbage, and actually fill in the gaps where the, the food doesn't supply. And we know food has been degraded in quality over time because we did not let the soil rest. The soil is where the nutrients come from as they're um, being, uh, the food is grown into that and they go up into the roots to be harvested. So we understand that supplements are important, but we want you to live healthy. With that said, I want to, uh, I, I found a scripture 
uh, before we come on. The Lord really was speaking to me about this, and, and I can quote this scripture. But it, it's Isaiah 40, 31, and I just want you to really hear this and kind of kind of really um, understand what this means as we kind of wrap this thing up today. Isaiah 41 is, is kind of one of those scriptures that I look at and I go, wow, that is so encouraging. And so as I turn there right now in Isaiah, Isaiah 40, chapter, chapter 40, verse 31, it's my, one of my favorite scriptures of all time. I'm just going to read this to you very quickly because I want you to leave with something called hope. And here it is. Those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not faint. I don't want you to faint. We don't want you to faint. We don't want you to be weary and tired and beat down and burned out all the time. We want you to be healthy. We want to do that by, by uh, giving you truths, giving you education, giving you inspiration on 4E TV. We also want you to go to our our websites and and check those things a lot of free stuff on there there are articles on there, blogs there are things you can print off there's a devotional for you on a daily basis there's physical food supplies there's supplements on there that you can get to help you along these things if you've enjoyed what you hear in 4e TV we want you to tell us there's a way to contact us we want to hear from you if you are in the Tulsa area, we want you to come by and see us at the Functional Medical Institute. You can always get a hold of us there. We're there. We want to help you out. We want to provide healing in your life. God's gifted us in that area. And folks, we, we want you to really uh, understand that, that we are here to, uh, to bless you. We're here to encourage you. You know, we're here to study. We try to study and, and, and really stay abreast with all the newest stuff, but we want to bless you. So... Understand that, that as we give, we want you to receive that. If you've enjoyed what you see and what you hear, as I said, let us know. Most importantly, we want you to pray for us and encourage us. Encouragers, we need encouragement too. Absolutely. Seriously. We want you to get on and encourage us, but primarily prayer is the biggest thing as we press on. If you feel so led, if God lays it on how to support this uh, nonprofit, that supplies the need for this TV financially, we want you to do that. Just be obedient to Him. We want you to have some rest. We want you to be at peace. I want you to lead this life on a sprint. God bless you guys.